in part, before we get going, uh, if you are watching this on YouTube, uh, please like and subscribe. It greatly helps the channel out immensely. And if you want to donate, you can go to PayPal, Venmo, or Cash App to donate. Uh, you can find that in my um, in the link to the bio there, and it'll be there. Uh, or it'll, I'll put it in the description, uh, first chance I get. But anyway, on to the opponent preview series as we continue. In part five of the 2024 Miami Hurricanes opponent preview series, I will preview the Virginia Tech Cokies, our opponent up at Hard Rock Stadium on Friday night, September 27th in the ACC opener. Virginia Tech had a sluggish beginning, but they made a turnaround last season. They made it to a bowl game and ended ending with a winning record in the ACC for the first time since 2019. Despite this, they had a tough time against the top teams, losing to Florida State, Louisville, and NC State by a total score of 108-48 to combined. The Hokies could be a surprise team in the 2024 season, but they must show they can defeat top opponents before being considered ACC contenders. When you look at Virginia Tech's offense, it must start with their quarterback, Kyron Drones, who emerged as a game changer tallying 22 touchdowns and 11 starts and revitalizing the ground game. The team saw a significant increase in yards per game after Drones took over, with tailback Bashul Tutin um, stepping up as a key player. The receiving core is stacked with Ali Jennings back from injury and a trio of veterans putting up impressive numbers. While the offensive line is a question mark, there's hope for improvement with the addition of transfer Montavious Cunningham who comes over from Georgia State. Now, while the Hokies struggled with their running game early in the season, their defense managed to finish the year in the top 20 nationally for the first time since 2017. What makes this particularly impressive is their pass coverage with Dorian Strong and Mansoor Delane forming what many consider to be the best cornerback duel in the conference. Virginia Tech also excelled in limiting passing yards, ranking fourth nationally with only 168.8 yards allowed per game. This success was complemented by a strong pass rush, which recorded 39 sacks and was led by Antoine Ra Powell Ryland with nine and a half sacks. Now, to address their weaknesses, they turned to the portal. They added defensive tackles, Aeneas Peebles from Duke, Kamari Copeland from Iowa Western Community College, and Kelvin Gilliam Jr. from Oklahoma to bolster the interior of that D-line. With Peebles already boasting an all-ACC accolade, you add the addition of linebacker Sam Brumfield, who led Middle Tennessee with 81 tackles last year. They'll aim to improve their run defense. The Virginia Tech defense was solid, excelling against the pass, but struggling against the runs at times. This is important because when they held opponents to under 140 yards rushing, they were 6-0. But when they allowed more than 140 yards to an opponent, they were 1-6. In the first two seasons under Brent Pry, Virginia Tech only won one, get this, one out of their 12 games when giving up over 140 yards. On special teams, the Hokies boasted top-tier top -tier kick and punt returners in Tootin, averaging 28.9 yards with two kickoff returns, two kickoff touchdowns, I'm sorry, and Tucker Holloway averaging 12.9 yards on punt returns for the first time in two decades. And that's, you know, that's the M.O. with the old Beamer ball. They, I mean, Brent probably wants to bring that back. And that's been there. The M.O. has always been special teams, block kicks, etc. And returning alongside them is kicker John Love, who impressively converted 91.7% of his field goal attempts. Now, the 2024 Hokies are expected to reach great heights, and for good reason. The schedule is favorable, but it's not a cakewalk either. Just simply showing up at Vanderbilt and Old Dominion hosting Marshall and Rutgers won't guarantee a 4-1 start. 3-1 more realistic, and anything less than that, disappointing. But notice who they miss on their schedule. They will miss FSU, Louisville, North Carolina, NC State, Cal, Pitt, at SMU, and Wake. While Clemson poses a big challenge, and you all know Dabo always teams always do that. That game's in Blacksburg. Miami, of course, is a tough road game. We'll, I'll talk more about that in a minute. But Stanford, Syracuse, and Duke are manageable away matchups. But that Syracuse game 
is going to be one that's really going to be interesting. I think the toughest of those three. Now, let's not, let's not get carried away here, folks. Virginia Tech didn't have any significant wins last year and could easily stumble against Georgia Tech or Syracuse at home. Okay. So, especially that Syracuse game. One to keep an eye on there. Nonetheless, this season has the potential to be the program's best since 2019. Look at some fun facts on Virginia Tech from last season. The first quarter, they scored, they, their scoring total 59 points, while they dominated the second quarter with 147 points. Their defense also shined with, again, I mentioned 39 sacks for a total loss of 244 yards, compared to their opponent's 24 sacks for 164 yards. When it came to fourth down conversions, Virginia Tech excelled with a 65% success rate, converting 17 out of 26, while their opponents managed just 53%, 9 out of 17. When you look at the schedule, I don't have to tell you, September 27th at Hard Rock, when they come here, that's going to also be their toughest road game of the season. And after they leave HR, leave Hard Rock, they go to Stanford for a challenging yet potentially victorious matchup before a well-deserved break coming back from the West Coast. Following that, there's only one more away game against Syracuse before Thanksgiving. Now, when when they come here, if they, when they, if they beat us, that could set the tone for the rest of their season and raise their bar for expectations. From the Canes' perspective now, we know the deal. This is the conference opener on a short week and likely 4-0 or at worst 3-1 coming in. Now, this is a Virginia Tech team on the rise, and we know we have to take care of business against a hungry Hokies team that will be out to prove they belong among the top teams in the conference. When I look at Virginia Tech's schedule, I'm going to actually go 10-2 and two with losses to Clemson and Miami. That's my prediction. In part six of the series, I will preview the Cal Golden Bears.